Hello, this is Mike Swanson. I run the website wallstreetwinner.com and the odds are that you're watching this video because you got an email from me telling you that it's up and on the internet for you to watch. Now, I'm also the author of this book, Strategic Stock Trading. If you're new to the markets, if you're not doing as well as you think you should be, it's likely because you don't have the knowledge to really implement real trading tactics and um, understand the trends in the market. And that's what this book is designed to help you start to do. And today, I want to talk about where we are in this bear market, because uh, bear markets tend to have three distinct phases to them. And I would say that this week began phase two. Uh, now, um, and I would actually say it's official. Uh, I got an email from me from one of the major brokerage houses that perhaps influences more new traders than any other in the world uh, that actually uh, made it official. Uh, now, and what they said will also show you why we're in stage two and not stage three or at the end of the bear market. Well, I got to show you my screen uh, so you can see the email I got, understand what I'm talking about. And then, um, so this is an article I wrote for a website called Market Oracle years and years ago, six, six years now. And I put this uh, image in it or used it, uh, but investor sentiment during market cycles. Now we're in a bear market. And I, if you've been following me, and I have it in my book here, I define a bear market as one in which the market is trading below the 200 and 150 day moving averages. And those moving averages are, are sloping down and acting as resistance, which is what they've been doing now for months. And a year ago, we saw warning signs that you know bear market was likely, the internals of the market were fading, uh, all sorts of stuff. But what's happening now, that's what's really important to you. So uh, that relationship to moving average called stage analysis, you match that with this to figure out where are we really. So I would say there are three phases psychologically to a bear market. The first is when the market peaks, it causes uh, anxiety in people because their accounts go down in value, but not far enough down in value to make them you know, really suffer or feel like they have to take action. But they are anxious because things are not going up like they were before. Something is changing, uh, but they don't really understand what it is, or they're thinking, oh, these changes are temporary, uh, but something is going on. Then the selling will pick up it's not simply a one or two week dip, which is what they've seen in the past. Uh, in bull markets, typically you will get corrections every year, at least one, often two, typically two, that take the market down to the 200 day moving average. See, in bull markets, the 200 day moving average acts as support and it gets tested once or twice a year. Those retests, those corrections, typically are short and sharp. Typically, they will last one to four weeks. Very rarely do they go beyond that. If you look from 2009 to 2020, or even 2022, January, all the market corrections and declines, uh, none of, you know, only a few lasted more than a month. The March 2020 was an exceptional case, but even it uh, did not last nowhere as long as the current decline in the markets has been going on. Uh, that's one of the things that can happen often does in a bear market. Instead of a decline lasting weeks, it now lasts months uh, and often six to 12 months is, is, is normal for the uh, duration of a bear market. Sometimes they can even last up to two years if it's a mega top that's been put in place, which is what happened in 2000. It's what happened in 2007. And I think it's what has happened here. 
but I don't think this is going to go on for two years. Um, but I, and part of the reason why I don't think it's going to go on for two years is I think we're now in the second phase of the bear market. So uh, the denial phase is something I think we just went through and completed uh, last week. Uh, so uh, towards the end of May, there was another uh, rally. It was the weakest of the ones so far this year, and it already came to an end Friday. Uh, but during that rally, a lot of people came out and made predictions to justify and rationalize the idea that, the, that this was a correction that we've been through and the market is going to go to new highs. And this rally is just going to accelerate. Kathy Wood was making such arguments. What most of these people were saying was that the things that have been weighing the market down in their mind was inflation, which they saw as temporary. And they were predicting, claiming that inflation was, um, the rate of inflation was, was peaking in May and would come back down. And that the Federal Reserve as a result would be able to um, do fewer rate hikes as expected, perhaps none by September. Well, these arguments they were making were not backed by what was going on in the Fed fund futures market. They were not uh, evident in the bond market. Uh, they, were, they weren't in the markets anywhere. They were simply um, made up by them uh, to rationalize the notion that this is just a correction and things are great. Well, they were wrong. And we obviously know that from the data that came out last week, inflation went to a new high, uh, not seen since 1980, surpassing May, uh, April, uh, March. Um, the bull arguments crushed. Now bonds are going down lower and, and the odds of rate hikes have only increased. And the stock market has also dropped. So what is now happening you know, is the bull arguments, the, the idea that nothing has changed is thrown completely out the window. Not is it simply me saying these things or maybe a few other people, but it is uh, being recognized now by mainstream financial media, by all commentators that things are truly different. <laughs> when these all a lot of these people were saying nothing was different or don't worry well to demonstrate to you how widespread the idea that this is a bear market has now become accepted consensus let me present to you an email i received from robin hood itself robin hood the broker of millions of millennial investors and newbies that got in the market in 2020 in fact, these, these are uh, people are heavily influenced by what they see on the Robinhood app and the emails they get from Robinhood. So here is Robinhood, which has been telling them, because I get the emails, that has been telling them that the market's okay and just <laughs> trying to make jokes about stuff as things were declining. Don't worry, <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Being really snarky about it, trying to encourage people through that type of talk now has come out this Monday and made it and admitted this is a bear market. What they had denied, they are now saying is real. And they are starting this email with the sentence, we have officially hit a bear market in the S&P 500. They're making it official. And then they go, how do we get here? Oh, stimulus, oh, stimulus. A lot of expectations, um, valuations got high. Will the market continue to fall? Well, this is where it gets interesting. So when anyone says it's a bear market, packed into that is the suggestion that the market can indeed fall a little bit more. Anyone who says I'm a bear in the market, they're suggesting the market can fall a little bit more. And now everyone is basically in the, you know, the mainstream and, 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 and there's no one that's been as representative of the bubble bull market as Robinhood itself and its emails is saying it's a bear market so it can fall. Well, here's the kicker. They do all this analysis. 
about earnings and valuations and mumbo jumbo, because no one can really predict all these things. Are we going to have a recession? If they have a recession, uh, th the market could fall really bad, but they say, we don't know yet. Uh, so we shouldn't worry about that. And in the end, the market may just fall a little bit more for where it is now. So they're kind of trying to reassure you, what does this mean? Diversify. Uh, it talks about, you know, what I say people should do, what I am doing. I've hedged positions. I've raised cash. I advocate having cash reserves or at least some hedges that you'll take off later that will enable you to be in a position to buy and be one of the people that profit when this bear market is over instead of someone who's just losing, 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 losing. But no, what does Robinhood tell people to do? Make trades, make trades. They say diversify. And their recommendation is to sell some stocks and try to buy what they call our higher quality stocks or lower valued stocks, dividend stocks, energy, healthcare. Uh, that's the recommendation. They want their customers to trade because through the trades and the order flow, that's how Robinhood makes its money. So they admit it's a bear market. They make it official in their words. And they say the solution is not to worry, but to sell and move into energy and dividends. Well, I will tell you, I own energy stocks. I've been, I bought energy stocks in 2020. I still hold them. Um, I've barely sold any of them. And I've not sold any of them anytime recently. I just make adjustments to my portfolio all the time. I own lots and lots, lots, lots of individual stocks. And if one doesn't work out, I get out. Tax loss harvesting. But I own energy stocks. I bought them in 2020. I still own almost all the ones I bought. One of the biggest holdings in my account when it comes to individual stocks is Exxon. And I'm going to tell you, as I say that, do not listen to this advice. Do not just think, oh, I'm going to sell Apple and buy Exxon, and that's a solution. It's not a solution to what's going on in this market. These, this email is, 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 I believe, bad advice. That I'll just say, put it that way. Um, everything can pull back in the markets now. We saw that on Monday. Energy stocks took a hit. Why? Because when the markets when the selling in the market picks up, there are a lot of people that have to sell because they're on margin and they can sell anything. And, and, and the selling can become widespread. We saw a glimpse of that a couple of weeks ago when silver um, broke down and hit the mining stocks for a day or two. But now, you know, anything can get hit in a market like this. It doesn't mean I think energy stocks are going to crash. It doesn't mean I think energy stocks are bad investments. I would say, don't buy, don't just simply say, oh, I'm going to sell Apple and buy Exxon instead or NVIDIA and buy uh, Chevron or something, or get out of ARC and buy XLE, which would be a smart move to make. But what I would suggest is to buy stuff on dips. And this dip, I don't think is done. Uh, and um, so let's turn back to where we are in, in the bear market. So the word phase two is where we're at. Phase two is when the reality of the bear market becomes accepted by just about everyone in the market. And mainstream is saying it's a bear market. Robinhood is saying it's a bear market. So on this chart, stage two, which is where we're at, is fear and desperation. And that's where we're at. People are getting more scared. Some are getting desperate. That's going to cause margin liquidations. Uh, and that's where we're at. And that phase two, you know, it can last days. It can last weeks. It can last months. I cannot do, I can't predict how long it's going to last today. I have to watch the markets. You know, I, re I analyze things on a weekly basis typically. And I can't, you know, well, I'll, I could tell you this. Bear markets end in stage three, which is panic and capitulation. Mass panic, capitulation. And we're, we, we have not seen a whiff of that yet. 
in this bear market. We haven't even entered that phase of this bear market. That phase was basically, um, if you look at the 2008 bear market, that was basically the uh, first quarter of 2009 when the S&P 500 fell to 666 of bottom there. If you wanna look at the bear market of 2000 to 2003, that phase was when Enron and WorldCom hit the news and the market slid just a bit for what seemed to be weeks on end and made a bottom that July. Uh, so it took in 2000, it took two years to get there basically from 2000, 2002 and uh, in, in, in the other time too. I don't think it's gonna take us two years, uh, but this is what I think. I think we're facing two possibilities. One is the stock market selling that we have seen so far picks up and leads to a meltdown uh, that is sort of like a, a crash situation. Uh, I'm not saying it's 1987 stock market crash, but we do go lower. We do see panic and uh, capitulation and maybe, you know, it's, and it's just an event. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. I think there's another scenario that's more likely to happen, and that is what we've been seeing from January to now, which is June, this first six months of market action is simply going to continue like this for another four to 10 months. You know, a market that has very weak rallies, goes sideways, it keeps people holding, keeps people hopeful, and then it goes lower. And we get a couple more stair-step declines over the next, for the rest of this year, that leads to the final end of this bear market. And one reason that scenario is more likely is because crashes are the exception. You know, I, the market crashed in 2020, it crashed in 2008. It did not crash in that 2000, 2002 bull bear market. And the only other crash before that was 1987 and 1929, and you could say 19, I think it was 07. Uh, you know, you, you're speaking of a handful of crashes over what is now 122 years of history for the US stock market. Most bear markets are, 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 are like what we've been seeing from January to today. So I think it's more likely that that's going to be how this plays out but we're not over yet. We're just in phase two. We started phase two. That does get us closer to the end, but this is where we are now. At some point, I do think we're gonna see gold, silver uh, break away from the decline in the stock market. They did that in the 2000s. Uh, gold bottomed in the fall of 2000 and then you know, did outperform the stock market for the next 10 years. In the 1970s, the Stock market fell 50% in 1974. Gold actually went up a little bit and then took off uh, and did incredible the rest of that decade. So, yeah, but we got to watch it week by week for a true change in the price action. Uh, and, and commodities are still in bull markets. They're still above the 200-day moving average. Energy stocks are. But I think at the moment, energy stocks are going through a correction as, this, as the overall market enters stage two of the psychological phase of the bear market. And that's why I don't really feel confident to say, go buy energy stocks today, even though I own a lot of energy stocks. I'm not trying to get you to trade um, just for the sake of it. And I'm not Robin Hood trying to get you to make a sell and a buy and a do this and do that and, and, and drive yourself crazy to rack up commissions. I'm trying to make videos to help you navigate the market situation so you can come out of it as one of the big winners, not just today, next week, which I can't help you win tomorrow or day trade, but in the years to come. Because when we get to capitulation, when we get to panic and despondency, there will be the best buying opportunity probably for the rest of our lives. I don't think the lows seen then will ever be seen ever again. So a lot said, but interesting week, and we're officially in a bear market, according to Robinhood. Now, if this is the 
first time you've seen me on YouTube, click uh, subscribe, click the bell, and then YouTube will send you an alert the next time I put a video up and hit the like button. Um, and then YouTube algorithms will know that, hey, not everyone needs to see Kathy Wood and all the other people on YouTube pretending to be her, mimicking her language. Some people want to navigate this market um, and, 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 and do better than that. Uh, so all that said, we'll be talking with you later.